Hi, this is a chapter from a book I'm reading which is called My Name is Red by Orhan Pamuk. Here it is, it's got a gorgeous cover. Um, winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, mm, I don't know when, 10 years ago? Anyway, this chapter is called I Am a Tree. I am a tree, and I am quite lonely. I weep in the rain. For the sake of all, I'll listen to what I have to say. Drink down your coffee so your sleep abandons you and your eyes open wide. Stare at me as you would at gins, and let me explain to you why I'm so alone. Number one. They allege that I've been hastily sketched onto non-sized rough paper so the picture of a tree might ha hang behind the master storyteller. True enough, at this moment there are no other slender trees beside me, no seven-leaf step plants, no dark billowing rock formations which at times resemble Satan or a man, and no coiling Chinese clouds, just the ground, the sky, myself and the horizon. But my story is much more complicated. Number two. As a tree, I need not be part of a book. As the picture of a tree, however, I'm disturbed that I'm not a page within some manuscript. Since I'm not representing something in a book, what comes to mind is that my picture will be nailed to a wall and the likes of pagans and infidels will prostrate themselves before me in worship. May the followers of Ezurumi Hoja not hear that, not hear that I secretly take pride in this thought, but then I'm overcome with the utmost fear and embarrassment. Number three, the essential reason for my loneliness is that I don't even know where I belong. I was supposed to be part of a story, but I fell from there like a leaf in autumn. Let me tell you about it. Falling from my story like a leaf falls and fall. Fix the light. Okay. Um, 40 years ago, the Persian Shah Thomas, who was the arch enemy of the Ottomans, as well as the world's greatest patron king of the art of painting, began to grow senile and lost his enthusiasm for wine, music, poetry, and painting. Furthermore, he quit drinking coffee, and naturally his brain stopped working. Full of the suspicions of a long-faced, dark-spirited old geezer, he transferred his capital from Tabriz, which was then Persian territory, to Kazvin, so it would be further from the Ottoman armies. One day, when he'd grown even older, he was possessed by a jinn, had a nervous fit, and begging God's forgiveness, completely swore off wine, handsome young boys, and painting, which is proof enough that after this, great Shah lost his taste for coffee. He also lost his mind. And this was why the divinely inspired bookbinders, calligraphers, gilders, and miniaturists who created the greatest masterpieces in the world at over a 20-year period in Tabriz scattered like a covey of partridges to other cities. Shah Thomas' nephew and son-in-law, Sultan Ibrahim Mirza, invited the most gifted among them to um, Mashbad, Mashad, invited the most gifted among them to Mashad, where he served as provincial governor and settled them in his miniaturist's workshop to copy out a marvelous illuminated and illustrated manuscript of all seven fables of the Seven Thrones of Jami, the greatest poet in Herat during the reign of Tamerlane. Shah Tamas, uh -oh. I thought we got cut off. Okay. Shah 
Shah Tamas, who both admired and envied his intelligent and handsome nephew, and regretted having given his daughter to him in marriage, was consumed by jealousy when he heard about this magnificent book, and angrily ousted his nephew from the post of governor of Mashhad, banishing him to the city of Kain, before sending him off to the smaller town of Sebzivar in a renewed fit of anger. The calligraphers and illuminators of Mashhad thereupon dispersed to other cities and regions, to the book arts workshops of other sultans and princes. Miraculously, however, Sultan Ibrahim Mirza's marvelous volume did not remain unfinished, for in his service he had a devoted librarian. This man would travel on horseback all the way to Shiraz, where the best master gilders lived. Then he'd take a couple pages to Isfahan, seeking the more elegant calligraphers of Nestalic script. Afterward, he'd cross great mountains till he'd made it all the way to Bukhara, where he'd arrange the picture's composition and have the figures drawn by the great master painter who worked under the Uzbek Khan. Next, he'd go down to Herat to commission one of its half-blind old masters to paint from memory the sinuous curves of plants and leaves. Then visiting another calligrapher in Herat, He'd direct him to inscribe in gold, Rika script, the sign above a door within the picture. Finally, he'd be off again.